I'm Jack Jordan, former superintendent of schools in the North Side District, and today we have two people that have roots that go back to the history, through the history of North Side School District and its founding elementary school district. They were outstanding students and employees of North Side, and we're lucky to have with us the Madlas uh, today. I'm Juanita Madla, also known as Janie. And I'm Jesse Madla. Mr. Jordan contacted me I, several weeks ago, and uh, he sent a list of questions, information that he would like to know about our family and their involvement with uh, Los Reyes, which was pre Holotis school, uh, and uh, going back to our ancestors. Uh, from my father's side, uh, his mother was a Menchaca, and they came to the area in, probably in the 1850s, as best as I know. Uh, they lived in the Menchaca Cave. He did not build, build a home until about the 1880s, I believe. And that house is still standing. It's currently owned by Yolanda Davis. And they have it fixed up and rented out. Uh, the the Menchaca Cave has been its a uh, protected cave. Uh, happened they inherited, and my dad always had it for sale. Uh, he said there'd be some fool that would come along and pay him what he asked for. <laughs> well, the fool came along, and it was very hard for me to keep up with it. Uh, so I went ahead and sold it. It is protected. There are endangered species there, but uh, how big a, and, a cave is it? It's pretty big. Uh, Gosh, I would say probably as big as this building that we're in right now. And it's probably about maybe 100 feet back. Yeah, maybe I guess 200 so. 200 feet. Yeah. Before selling it, uh, we had uh, one of the relatives that's very much into the Indian culture, and he wanted to do an Indian blessing there. And so that was interesting. Uh, that is. <laughs> yes. But, uh, the Menchacas came from the state of Coahuila. Uh, Francisco Menchaca who happened to get a land grant, but that didn't happen until about the 18, 1891. 1891? Yeah, 18, 160 acres. So they lived on the land for a long time. And of course, one of the attractions is the Holotus Creek was right there, and it was pristine water. And I think that was what attracted oh. uh, Matias and Constantina. And yeah. they came, they arrived in 1855 from uh, they were originally from Poland, from Centava, Poland. So they had one daughter, and then our grandfather, Frank, was born in what is now, uh, I guess, St. Hedwig, St. Martinez St. area yeah. in there. And then they came by 19, rather, 1870, they were in Holotus. Uh, the 1860 census isn't available, so <laughs> uh, I think that's the one that burned. Okay, and but, they came from Poland. Yes, they came from And their from name Poland. was? Madla. Madla. Uh, Matthias and Constantina. Okay. Had a daughter with them, Anna. She was 12. And then soon after they arrived, my grandfather Frank was born. And then later they had another daughter, Delfina. And um, so they, Matthias and Constantina, never had owned any property. They just lived on the land. Uh, they lived really right close to the creek, yeah. you know, which is uh, Chimney Creek or Chimeneas Creek. And, well, when you were always running. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so. Is it running today? No. Not, right dry, not right now. It just I mean, depends on it, the water level. When it, yeah, when it rains, it, <laughs> it runs. Yeah, so it runs. So, uh, along the creek. And you can still see the marks. Now, the, how, how did he do that? Uh, with a hand drill uh, that you twist around like with like a twist. crank uh -huh. and he drilled the holes down about 18 inches and then he put a piece of dry oak okay. in the hole and then pour water on it and the next morning it break the rock off when it swelled up yeah. and he sw he would what a load good lesson yeah. children that are going to yeah. come to this museum yeah, yeah. uh <laughs> he would load up the the rock on a horse-drawn cart and he'd take it to san sell it in san antonio Maybe even sell it in Bernie. Yeah. 
And, uh, and the stone was lime. limestone. Limestone. Yes. And then whatever he had left, he started building his home. I think he started it 1886. He completed it in 1891. Yeah. Now he married Francisca Menchaca, who was really just a little ways from there. Uh, she was Francisco and Menchaca and Car Catarina Garza's daughter. And uh, they married in January of 1889. I have the dates written down wow. that, that uh, we've researched. But the rock was left over. That's what he used to build his house. And the house is still standing. I, well, yeah. it belongs to yeah. Ralph. Yeah, it belongs to Ralph Madla, to my cousin. Yeah. But y'all lived there, what, yeah. 10, or About mom ten and dad years. lived there 10 years. About 10 then, years. Then mother and dad built their house on the eastern part of the ranch. So. Well, one thing about rock, it, it stays for a while. It stays, yes, <laughs> it stays, it stays, stays yeah. Well, the house I live in was my, the house my parents built. And yeah, it's fantastic. Yeah, it's when the wind blows hard or there's a threat of tornado, I want to be home. I don't want to be at their <laughs> house or at my other brother's house. I'll, None of this I'll modern go, stuff. No, <laughs> I'll go home. <laughs> um, I don't know. That, that kitchen part of my house is pretty sturdy. Yeah. Let, let me ask you this thing. How did they get from Mexico up here? They come by wagon? I think wagon, horse, walked maybe. Well, you know, and, yeah. and the modelers that came from Poland came by boat? They came by boat. They came on the Hamburg. Hamburg. Yes, which was, a, they, it, it uh, sailed out of Hamburg, Germany, went to Liverpool, there, I have it on that. There was another one where they stopped. Then they stopped in New York. Okay. Then came on around, and we think they came through Indianola, which Indianola. of course the hur hurricane got it. And as I understand, once they got to the Texas coast, they walked, and uh, that was at the time that Pana Maria was, because it was okay. settled in December of 1854. So. And um, it was settled by. Yes. Polish. Yes. Yes. Immigrants. Mm -hmm. And there was a on ship. There was, and I just found this out recently from doing research. A woman named Mariana Matla Shishpanik, and uh, Shishpanik was her married name. She came from the same village, and settled in Carnes County. I I really think it was his sister. Uh, yeah. So um, <coughs> we need to do. I need to do more research on that. But, um, yeah, but uh, definitely the pristine creeks and, I guess, availability of life, that was, and just, well, I know coming from Europe, just being able to get land that would mm -hmm. belong to them, that was the attraction. And wildlife was abundant. And oh, yes, so uh -huh. you, you it still is. It. And it didn't have a hunting season. No. You <laughs> hunted when you <laughs> needed that it. Many hunters <laughs> yeah. Now, I think by eight, T uh, rather 1900s, 1910, 19 in there, when Armin Elmendorf was there, was a hunting season and a game warden and yeah. so forth. And uh, in this little book, Armin Elmendorf talks about that. Talks about that. Yes, how yes, it. yes, of the hunting and so forth. Now and then hear about the Madlas and Canary Islands. It, what is... No, the, no there's no there's connection, no connection. there. Okay. Uh, I know that. Have there you were, heard this? That yes, same thing? Oh. Uh, with the Menchacas. I know with there were there were some Menchacas that were descendants of the Canary Islanders, but we haven't been able to connect, make a connection with that. Uh, cause at least I've cleared that up yeah, in my mind. <laughs> right. Yeah. Uh, the the Menchacas are are Menchacas. My great grandfather Francisco, who got this Texas land grant. He was born in Candela, Coahuila. Coahuila, Coahuila borders right, Texas. Texas, and I. What think is now Texas? Yeah, yeah. What is now <laughs> Texas? Yes, yeah. At that time, it was all, all Mexico. one, all one part of Mexico, mm -hmm. all one state of Mexico. And then, the his wife Catarina Garza, she came from a little town named Melchor Musqui, Coahuila, and I've been there several yeah. times. It's a neat little neat town. Little yeah, town. Wow. yeah. Uh, heritage is important. Yes. Any of you yeah. been back to Pola? I have. Great. At, but at the time, I did not know where my ancestors had come from. Recently discovered that, yeah, that and right. just doing some research. What size town 
to be? Uh, probably very small, very small. Very small. The name of it is Centava. There is a church, and that was where the records came from, church records. Actually, we and I have maps of where it is in Poland. We were maybe 20 miles from there, but we didn't know it. So, uh, but it, that was, and I want to go back. It was sure. really do, neat. Do go back. Uh, yeah, be great. yeah, really neat experience. I loved the people there. I was with my cousin, Mary Jane Logan, and uh, she came through Northside. In fact, her daughter's teaching at O'Connor now. Okay. And we went together. It was really a neat experience. Tell, tell me what the, you, you described the creek and the limestone and tell, tell me about, and the cave, what about the wood, wooded area? Wooded Was area it? is mostly, mostly juniper and uh, live oak, some Spanish oak, cedar elm, a lot of laurel in certain places, uh, a lot of uh, agrito bushes. Okay. Uh, a lot of uh, evergreen sumac and forest sumac. Uh, a little bit of, uh, what do they call it, that uh, uh, lacy oak. Okay. Uh, is that red oak? The no, 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 it's a oh, okay. uh, that's Spanish oak. Yeah. Red oak. The lacy oak is a very oh, okay. crooked oak. <coughs> What else as far as the plants are concerned? Okay. The one that is gets to be kind of a large shrub and gives those kind of reddish berries yeah. that are kind of salty. That's that's, uh, uh, that's evergreen sumac. Okay. Tell us about the locations of Los Ray and the connection between your family and that school. And uh, I know some of your kinfolk yeah. served on the school board or yes. board of trustees yes. for Los Reyes. Yes. And, and I know I'm not pronouncing it correctly, so yeah. make sure it's Okay, <laughs> yeah, Los correctly. Reyes. Um, well, the first one was not on my grandfather's property because my grandparent, Madlas, acquired a thousand acres? Yeah. About a thousand acres? A little over a thousand yeah. acres. Yeah, yeah. In fact, I found an old tax receipt at, with the acreage on there that was in my grandmother's name. I think it was about 1930 well, something like that. Grandma was the one that uh, that really bought the land there. She pushed for it. Pushed for it. Okay. She was way ahead of her time. Yeah. And uh, the the second one was up on a hill. Um, gosh, I guess it would be the You're southwestern Top of the world. Yeah, world. You can find it on the map. You take a map out. Well, you want to just. This is uh, too small, but. Okay. Yeah. Uh, you have a. Was, I don't know. Look at that one, and I'll look at this one. This is M. A. Bryant. No, this is not. Uh, okay. Uh, this. This isn't either. Maybe this Church one is. Here we go. Um, Jesse, I think it's this one. Okay. Uh, here it is, Los Reyes Los School. Reyes right, right there. Okay, this is, that's, a, that's this number three. three. Yeah. Okay, number it would have been was, uh, on, uh, it was, uh, okay, Puskin, here we go. Yeah. There, it would be right here. Okay. So. Um, and that was number two. That was number and two. This is basically Bandera Road. Yeah, that's Bandera yeah. Road, Which and number three was here. And when, when did Bandera Road become a road and not just a path? Or was it always? Well, well I think far it, yeah, as far as we know, it was, you know, uh, basically. Uh, may I heard may Daddy say that they had moved, built a school over here when Bandera Road came through. So I don't know when it was. Yeah. Um, so there, are two, there were two sites. On the Madla right Ranch. On the yeah. Madla Ranch. Yeah. And, and my Uncle John was the oldest of the Madla children, my, my dad's siblings. He was a trustee, I think, like, what did I see, like 1914. 1914. Yeah, in that, that time period. And then my dad was a trustee, who, you know, Jesse Madla Sr., from the 1920s into about 1930. I know he used to talk about, uh, of course, Los Reyes number three, and there was a, 
cottage where Mrs. Dickerson lived. Yeah. Uh, you know, after the school moved, they left the fair boat. The that was a teacher's cottage. The teacher would live yeah, teacher there. Teacherage. Yeah, <laughs> yes. And uh, no, mom and dad used to say, well, they would take, uh, they'd get milk and butter and eggs. They'd provide that for the teacher. But what, what was, besides the, the quarry, what were the things that they did, not just for them, Sales, but for for others. Yes. Did oh, they well, have a dairy? No, they had. The, well, they farmed the land. My grandfather worked at other ranches also. Okay. He worked at the Tyner Ranch, which is now the Haby Ranch. Okay. That's where my father was born in, in San Geronimo. There were several children that were born there. And he rode shotgun for Wells Fargo, I understand, oh, really? at one time wow. between here and Laredo. I have some. I have a picture of my grandfather and some of the children working in the field. And uh, then, I guess about 1920s, then they started with mechanization started becoming right. available. And I have a receipt where they bought a a case tractor, the one that belonged to Uncle John. Yeah. And it was a, a tremendous amount of well, money sure. for that period of time. <laughs> but uh, they were. It was motorized. You didn't yes, have to yeah. pull it. With, yes, with a, and, you know. Uh, horses they, or mules. Right, or, and when they could get a motorcycle, Dad had a motorcycle, and he had cars, and he knew how to fix them. And, so. and he, he also drilled wells at That's one time. That's right. Yeah, Grandpa yeah. did drill wells. Yeah. I have yeah. a contract where he drilled the well for uh, the great-grandfather, Francisco yeah. Menchaca. Yeah. yeah, he did drill wells. So. They used to run it with a steam tractor. Mm -hmm. Okay, and how how did they power that? I know they powered it with steam. Wood. What, wood. They'd fire wood boiler and boiler with wood. Take about a quart of wood a day. Again, this is going to be a good teaching experience yes. for <laughs> youngsters that come to this uh, museum and mm -hmm. take take a look at uh, what things were like then and how you got power. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they used that steam tractor, and that steam tractor was still there at Uncle Frank's until World War II. Wow. And then they sold it for scrap iron. Yes. <laughs> well, that was yeah. the thing to do. Yes. <laughs> yeah. I, Patriotic. I did a lot of that War II. Yeah. But, what? you know, when I go to Tyler for the tractor show the first weekend in October, they've got the steam tractors there and the Titans. Well, and Daddy's Titan is there. Yeah. Isn't it? It's the yeah. Titan. Yeah, well, I drove it in the parade. Yeah. Okay, explain, uh, describe a Titan tractor. A Titan right. tractor was built by International 1917 to 1920. Okay, what, what is now International Harvester yeah. or International? And uh, that mills had a two-cylinder engine with outside valve train. Uh, it had overhead valves, but the, the push rods were outside. And had a big flywheel, and you cranked it from one side. And the motor was sideways, the engine was sideways. It didn't have a radiator. It had a, a 55 gallon barrel for a radiator. And it's just gravity feed, and yeah. or did it have a? It had just gravity. Gravity feed. Oh, yeah. but <coughs> tell tell me about the, the amount of property and what is how it uh, became kind of what. I call the Madler Ranch. You, you had with the grant how many acres? Okay, well, or sections? My, or? Okay, the the Menchaca Ranch was on the uh, the east side of uh, Scenic Loop Road from the okay. Madler Ranch, and Grandpa never got a land grant. He bought yes. the far dollar an acre, fifty mm -hmm. cents an acre. Um, part of the land that he bought, and he did not buy it all at once either, mm -hmm. but part of it, I think, at one time had belonged to uh, George, George Washington w Brackenridge. Yeah. Uh, something? From Brackenridge and M.A. Bryant. Yes, there were a number, uh, and then there was the school lands that's yeah. where the rock quarry is right now, yeah. and then what y'all own over yeah. there. Uh, a lot of the right. heirs have have sold. Um, hmm. Probably we have the most, and Ralph and Mary Ellen, yeah. and well now Frankie. Yeah. 
Okay, so the Menchaca Ranch was separate. Separate and southeast of. Yeah. Uh, uh, well, just east. East yeah, of directly Bernie east. Stage. Uh, scenic Loop. Scenic Loop. Okay. And as far as I yeah, know, Scenic, scenic Loop. Loop was been there, there uh, you know, it was you there know, then. It I was, remember yeah. when it was gravel, but yeah. it was there. Was it, a, the was it a stage? I th I think it was a stagecoach trail, probably going into Bernie and maybe going over to Leon Springs also. Uh, but, you know, it was there. I th and I know part of it is part of the old Spanish trail because the Okay trying yeah. to document that to save the hill country. That's our cause right now. <laughs> the the, the Madla Ranch then was on the island. Yes. Uh, yeah, Loop. the Madla Ranch went from Scenic Loop uh, on the west, west side of Scenic Loop to Bandera Road. Okay. Uh, and where were you all born? We were born in San Antonio. Okay. I was born to Grandma's house. Yeah, mm -hmm. he was born at 2025 Morales Street, and my other brother was born there also, and then I was born at Santa Rosa Hospital. Okay. Uh, she was a modern one. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> mother was older, the doctor having there the baby at home. So. Uh, yeah, and then I guess from, Lo you all went to Los Reyes, so you went there. I went to Los Reyes uh, for two years. Okay. Felix went for one, mm -hmm. and uh, Miss Hart, of course. Yes, and everyone walked. Um, yeah, we walked. Yeah, because you didn't have bus service over the no hill way. country. We didn't get <laughs> bus service till uh, they moved a lot of schools. They moved Los Reyes to school. Then we got a 1939 International bus, and uh, we had several drivers. But the one that stayed the longest was Roy Broccoli, who always was driving. When I was teaching here. Well, that's right. Yes. Yeah. He, well, was. he was yeah. my bus driver, or yeah. one of my bus drivers. Yeah. Well, yeah. They, they knew everybody, and were kin to most of them. In <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes, yeah. Yeah, well, the Bockleys, I know Dad and my Aunt Mary, were they were all good friends. Uh, uh, Uncle Manuel, too, Manuel. he would always, when he'd come, he lived in Mexico, and... Um, He'd always, go, He'd visit always go visit the Broncos. When, when you went to Los Reyes, how did they heat the, the school? Oh, they had a big pot-bellied stove in one corner of the room, and people would donate the wood, I guess. The parents would Probably. donate the wood, <laughs> and we'd bring it in and build a fire in the morning. And uh, it'd keep place pretty warm. And, and you didn't have much air conditioning, I understand. No, we didn't have any air conditioning. <laughs> Open up the windows. Open up the windows, right? Yeah. <laughs> That's right. I don't ever remember it being really hot. Uh, no, I don't know. I, well, you I you went to school after Labor Day. Labor Day? Yeah, the, uh, the Tuesday after Labor Day. We usually got out early in May. Uh, when I was in school, Toward we went right to the end of May. But <laughs> yeah. We usually got out about the 15th of May really? or something like uh -huh. that. And uh, during hunting season, we'd carry our rifles to school, jack the shells out before we went into the schoolhouse and put the rifles in the corner. Well, at Helotus School, my, my second brother, Felix, uh, he and Milton Broccoli, Roy Broccoli's son, were big buddies. During recess, they killed a, uh, a turkey with a rock. Felix was a bit rocks. <laughs> he did, he'd take aim and he didn't miss. And so they killed the turkey. They ran over to Milton's house, which was what, maybe a quarter of a mile yeah. from the school. And Mrs. Broccoli fixed them a turkey dinner. <laughs> so there you go. Yeah. <laughs> yeah so, um, and my recollection of Hollow this school, it was, I just had a wonderful time there. Um, when I was in third grade, Mr. Cody was the, the principal. Is that right? Yes, and uh, he was my cousin, Ralph, Ralph Madla's teacher. And we were, Ralph and I were talking. He says, oh, Mr. Cody was good at marbles. <laughs> <laughs> he said, every recess, we'd play marbles. I think he said, played poison or something like that. <laughs> yeah, but we, we just, we had a good time. And, uh, Didn't have a gym, you are playing marbles. Or oh, we put, jump rope. Yeah, or. <laughs> we jumped rope. We had 
tall swings that, like the ones that are in this catalog. And um, one of the, the students called it Stovall, and uh, he was good at swings. Ah, he could really swing high. We dared him to see if he could so go, do all, a flip. Yeah, <laughs> go all the way. He did, fell, broke his arm. The ambulance had to come get I mean, That was just. <laughs> That was the excitement for the yeah. year. <laughs> for the year. Oh, we were not the best of well, children it, it, either. <laughs> it's, it's proven to be that swings are really dangerous things to have on school grounds, and mm -hmm. you very seldom see a swing on yes, school grounds. Yes, yes. Oh, now we don't let children play with anything that's dangerous. Nor marbles. Nor, no, nor marbles, nor jacks. Or, uh, or throw washers. And Yes, oh, they might get hurt, so right. we just let them sit and play their video games. And <laughs> get real good on yeah, their phone. Yeah, <laughs> so, uh, yeah, but that, it was, Hello to School was a lot of fun. And uh, when I went, we, we had oh, uh, butane heat and windows for air conditioning. Uh, and lunch. Oh, lunch, well... When y'all did y'all have a cafeteria? Yeah, we had a cafeteria during World War II, and they had a surplus commodities, and Ms. Ott was the one in charge of the cafeteria. Yeah, and is that right? She yes. could do wonders with those, uh, with what little she had. Yeah. I know Mother used to help yeah. her sometimes. Yeah. And some of the ladies would come in every day and help her. So, actually, Jesse, you were in school at the time of the initial vote to consolidate and bring the elementary districts into yeah. Northside? Ah, you may have been out already because I think that was around 1949. Or 51, somewhere in okay. there. I, was, I graduated from high school in 51. Okay. I mean 50. In 50, okay. Because yeah, I started first yeah. grade in 50. Okay. Yeah, because I remember Daddy so and Mr. Grogan used you're, to get you together were right a lot. In the, at the start of Yes, it. yes, okay. uh-huh. And I was, we were interviewing Billy Busby, who was a former yes. trustee, whose son Rusty went to Marshall. I remember Rusty. Um, and <coughs> he said that, uh, that he and Mr. Cody would go out and visit with the farmers and ranchers mm -hmm. to encourage them to vote for yes. the consolidation. And uh, really <coughs> the, the point at that time was to change the format of the district to where they tax and build a high school, mm -hmm. which you went to. I was at Northside two years. Well, when I went into seventh grade, they had opened up Northside uh, Junior High, brand new school, which is now the band hall, I think, over at Marshall. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> I think you're right. Uh, and uh, then, so I was there two years, and then two years at Northside. Okay, at the end of that, my sophomore year, we had a big meeting, Mr. Smith, Homer Smith, he was wonderful. And uh, he gets up there and makes the announcement that school was uh, gonna be renamed because they were building a new high school. He said, this school will be named Oliver Wendell Holmes and the new one will be John Marshall. It was, were you teaching at I certainly at the was time? there. It, it was, <laughs> I was there. and, yeah, and I remember riot. it the same way that you remember it. <laughs> the riot almost, yeah. you know. Ooh, ooh, yes. Ooh, ooh. Uh, I, class of 62 was a close-knit group. They were very vocal, and if they had a cause, they went out and <laughs> fought for it. I mean, a whole bunch of us are there by in Mr. Smith's office, and he was so good. He would talk to us, and he would go to bat for us, and he said, I'm going to talk to the school board. And, and he, and, uh, he got it changed. They yes. Got change. yeah, yes, yes, yes. <laughs> yes, we won. <laughs> so, and, um, of course, it was a small, and you just you knew just about everybody. Uh, that's right. You certainly, yeah. certainly did. And uh, and I, I, my recall of that time is that the students were absolutely great. I was thinking, you know. I never heard of drugs. Yes. Drugs was something that was done by gangsters, and, you know, that it didn't happen. <laughs> Might have been an aspirin. <laughs> yeah, right, yeah, yeah. I, I do remember that, uh, oh gosh, the worst happened was there was a group that, of guys that skipped school and had a beer bust, and ah, uh, that was just, you know, 
horrible. It was just a terrible thing that had happened. <laughs> like, my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> well, after I came back from the service, the thing I enjoyed uh, was going to the uh, Mountain Oyster Fest that they'd have at John Marshall. They cook Mountain Oysters. The Ag Department, you know. Yeah, the Ag Department, yeah. The <laughs> Ag. And that, was, that was vital to this community. Yes, at that time, because right. it was a rural area. It was a farming, Yes, ranching, lots of dairies. And Dairies everywhere. Everywhere. Yes. Everywhere. Yeah. Uh, I thought that was so neat. You know, when they cut it out, I guess by the time I started teaching, they cut it out, and it just broke my heart. <laughs> what connections do you, does the Madley have today with Northside? Um, well, we've got kids in school. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Grandkids. Yeah. Grandkids. Um, yeah, I, guess I don't that, have any. Yeah, uh, Felix, is, Felix has. Felix. Uh, has a grandson that uh, is a drummer at O'Connor. And of course, right. his kids and Felix's kids all went through Northside on yeah. Halotis right. and Marshall. And, um, well, we had two drum majors. Susan was a drum major, wow. I guess, what it was, at 90, no, 90. And then John was drum major, 93, 94. So, oh, wow. yeah, they were all, they were big in band. And uh, Felix's daughter, Linda, taught with Northside probably around uh, 19 years ago. She taught for about three or four years when she started her family. She gave it up and Jeremy, her son, is at O'Connor and the daughter, Lene, is at Halotis. Isn't that something? Yeah. And from the other, uh, my cousin's grandchildren are at Halotis and at O'Connor and I guess, oh, there's some at Stinson too. You know, Ralph, uh, Madla's grandchildren, Mary Ellen, Madla Lata's grandchildren. So, yes. yeah, there. <laughs> Jesse, um, where did you go to junior high school? Oh, uh, well, it mostly at the Lotus because Lotus? they went to the eighth grade. Okay. And Tom Sawyer, who Sawyer Road, what mm -hmm. have, told me that they. I actually went through the some students at Leon Valley went through the ninth and tenth grade here. I think so, uh, yeah. A lot of them went through ninth grade, many some went through the tenth and then some of them went to Jefferson and mm -hmm. some went to uh where where did you go to high school? Oh uh, Central Catholic. Central Catholic. And how did you get to Central Catholic from <laughs> Model A. Model A. <laughs> I wish you had that Model A today. <laughs> Dad sold uh, that. So no, I don't. <laughs> Model don't A never did attract my attention. <laughs> <laughs> well, Model Bs were better. but yeah. <laughs> Now, Frank Lloyd went to, to uh, junior high, to 7th and 8th grade here at yeah. St. Leon Valley. Yeah. So I guess probably Felix was one of the last the ones. last ones that uh, went through the Lotus. Mm -hmm. Uh, who was your principal at Helotus? Well, we didn't have a principal. It was Miss Price and Miss Hart and uh, Miss Meyer. I don't know that any of them. And I, they ran the school. They ran the school. <laughs> yeah. And Mr. Cody was there? He was there one year oh. when I was in third grade. Okay. And, and who was uh, principal? Then uh, Mr. Well, I know when I was in fifth and sixth, it was Mr. Pergandi. Hmm. You know, I don't know his first name, just <laughs> And some of your teachers? Uh, okay, first and second, Mrs. Carl. And third, Mrs. Crutchfield. Fourth grade, Amy Gost, who taught in Northside yes. forever. And I don't know if she's still living. She did live there on, on Scenic Loop Road in Gray Forest. And um, I know where her house is, but I don't know if she, I haven't seen what? an obituary. Who, so. <laughs> who are some of the? teachers that you remember from junior high and high school. You oh, mentioned oh, Homer Smith, the principal yes, of Marshall. Yes, oh, from junior high. Uh, I think probably the one that I remember the most was Jackie MacArthur, later yes. Fields. Yes. She was wonderful. I, she, she came in the spring semester. She inherited a horrible class. I mean, we were hellions. We'd had a teacher that had no control. Kids will take control if the teacher doesn't. 
And uh, I mean, we were terrible. I'm sh and Jackie had just come out of college. I'm sure they told her, you know, you need to really be strict on these kids. When she walked in, we stood. We did not speak unless we were spoken to. You raised your hand and you waited to be acknowledged. She was tough, but we learned. No, she's an excellent teacher. She, yes. yes. Then I had her in high school for sophomore English. She had mellowed a little bit. We didn't have to stand. <laughs> but the first five minutes, we worked with pen, uh, penmanship exercise. For five minutes, you had to use, by that time, we had ballpoints. No, not in her class. You wrote with ink. ink. And we did these little exercises. She was wonderful. We just, we loved her. So I'm, she I'm got married. She was going to get married that summer. We had a, sh a surprise bridal shower for her, and she just, she broke down in tears. Well, and I, just, I she was... She, she was really wonderful. She married a good. highway patrol. Yes. Uh-huh. I, I, was, I was thinking you were going to say the reason you behave is because... Oh, she, no. <laughs> <laughs> no Jackie, Jackie didn't need a highway patrol. No, no. no. <laughs> MacArthur could handle it. Yes, yes. And then Mr. Freeman yes. taught math. Uh, Mr. Neff, American history. Charles oh, Neff. Oh, he was good. Just yeah. one, I still have my notes that I took in his class. He would check our notes. He'd go like this. He could find them as spell words. Well, I think we, even then if we I, didn't I have taught for a few years. I started out at Edgewood. Okay. And then uh, Hayburn. I got a little hacked off at Edgewood because uh, they wanted me to work a poll for a guy that I wouldn't even vote for dog catcher. <laughs> and the guy said, well, it's either that or your job. So I handed him a resignation and I so stopped. So you came, you came to <laughs> poll. To uh, Sam Rayburn and work with Price Harlan for. Yep, I enjoyed that. He's a drove, neat person. Mm -hmm. uh, drove a school bus. That's right. Uh, That's right. With Dick Rhodes was my mentor. Okay. Yeah, we we could always uh, we could always see how fast those buses would go. <laughs> you used to keep the bus at home. They're out, well, yeah, they're well, on the ranch. Yeah. Uh, when I was at uh, Saul Ross, I kept it at home. Yeah. yeah that, that was a common. Thing. Yes. That yeah. Probably. Well, didn't have room at the central didn't office have room for anymore. And also, it was easy to start a route. Yeah. Since you finished it. Yeah. Close well, there. you had the scenic loop route, didn't yeah, you? Yeah, I had the scenic loop yeah. route. It was uh, a little past the creme cow. And uh, I'd get there, and I. One of the, the times that uh, we had a flood. Uh, I don't remember whether it was Carla or another one. But I was going down that low stretch in, on Scenic Loop Road, and it was dry. By the time I got to the other bridge, the water was coming in to the bus on the second step. You're, you're lucky. <laughs> you were lucky. And, and uh, I went across that bridge at an angle. It washed the bus uh -huh. off, and I was fighting it. <laughs> and but you made it. Yeah, we made it. We got out. I got all of the bus out, except for the tail end was still underwater about oh, a foot, and the bus died. So I asked the kids for some scrap paper and dried out the end, started it up, and got to the next bridge, and we couldn't go any further. Oh, that's great. We, we really appreciate you taking your time oh, to share you. this uh, story <laughs> with us and the roots that you have with this community. Appreciate yeah. it. We've well, enjoyed you. it. Thank you for asking us, and it's been fun to go back and look at pictures and reminisce. Yeah. Yeah. <coughs> we'll go over some of these things now. Sure.